Let's take a look at the intermolecular forces for H2O. This is water. When we look at intermolecular forces, the first thing we need to ask, are there any ions present? Since we don't have a negative or a positive up here, there aren't any ions present, and we can just forget about this part here of our flow chart. The next question we need to ask, are there polar molecules present? So is water a polar molecule? If we take a look at the Lewis structure for water, we can see we have the water molecule, two hydrogen atoms, and then these two lone pairs here. We really need to look at the molecular geometry to get a better sense. So here's our water molecule, and those two lone pairs up here, they force these hydrogen atoms down. So we have a side where we have the oxygen, which is more electronegative, and then the hydrogens. So this side of the molecule here on top, this is going to be a little more negative, and then on the bottom, this will be a little more positive. So water is a polar molecule, so we do have a polar molecule present. If you need help figuring out why water is polar, there's a link in the description at the end of this video as well. So we have a polar molecule. Water is a polar molecule. The next question is, are these hydrogen atoms bonded to either fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen? And here's our oxygen atom. So yes, the hydrogens are bonded to an oxygen atom. That means we have hydrogen bonding. So for water, hydrogen bonding, that's going to be the primary intermolecular force. We'll also have dipole-dipole forces and London dispersion forces as well. But it's that hydrogen bonding that's the really the main intermolecular force when we talk about H2O, water. And it does explain a lot of the chemical and physical properties of water as well. This is Dr. B looking at the intermolecular forces for water, H2O. Hydrogen bonding is the main one, but we do have dipole-dipole and London dispersion forces as well. Thanks for watching.